are with Kate Cotter, founder and president of Life Chronicles. How are you, Kate? Good, thank you for being here. Yeah, definitely. This is uh, a project and an organization in general that needs a lot of attention because uh, the mission is invaluable. I really like what you're doing here. So tell us a little bit about what's Life Chronicles. Uh, I can tell you how Life Chronicles began. Mm -hmm. I had a very dear friend who uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer just six weeks after her husband died of Lou Gehrig's disease and their children were 16, 13, and 10. And I uh, knew, I had done a television internship actually at Channel 17 a couple of years before. I uh, was interested in doing something meaningful with that work and didn't know what it was until my friend told me that they had told her to get her affairs in order, that she had a short time to live. And I came to her and said, let's sit you in front of a camera and you tell the children everything you'd like them to know for the rest of their lives. And it was a couple months after that I said, you know what, this is that thing I've been looking for. And we started a nonprofit and we've been doing it for 10 years now with 400 videos and about 200 volunteers. 10 years, congratulations. Thank you. Because it's not easy. No, it's not. To get a nonprofit about because funding, and we'll talk about that. But first, I would like to know more about the process of filming somebody that is ill. How, how difficult it is? Um, we don't find it difficult. In fact, one of the things we're able to tell people is that this is going to be far easier than you think. Part of it is because we become so experienced at doing this with people mm -hmm. that we know how to set them at ease, we know how to walk them through their lives, we know how to listen to what they talk about so that they cover issues that they want to cover. We talk to them ahead of time about what they may want to talk about make sure that we cover those things that are important to them for their families. And I know you have uh, very different types of persons and personalities going on. So it could be from kids to grandpas, every, everything through. So just can you just tell us about an example that you remember or a story that is meaningful for you for some reason, besides um, your friend, obviously, or the project that uh, you, will, you are editing right now? Well, we're working on Father Virgil Cordano right now, who is an uh, icon in this community. Uh, he's been our, our priest at the mission since 1945. And uh, we were asked to tape him. He, is 89 years old now and one of the things that people often call us about is we have a person who's reaching a higher age and we want to make sure that they're recorded before they, they're gone or before they have a condition that changes their personality or their ability to speak. That's a lot of the work that we do. And taping Father Virgil was probably one of the most remarkable tapings we've ever done. And as a result of taping Father Virgil, we are now embarking on a whole new uh, area of our work where we will be taking uh, 10 years of videos that we've done and picking clips of some of the most profound positive messages and great role models of people and we will be taking it to through education so that young people can have these experiences. That's great and uh, you know just to have everything on like on a video to watch and you know see it as many times as you need. Now how or which other services do you provide besides the video and how long are these videos? Generally speaking, the videos are about an hour. We don't tell mm -hmm. people how long or short they should be. Um, I remember one man we taped was in his hospice bed and we went three and a half hours, which was a very big surprise. He had a box of hats down below that he would pick up and change his hat as he told different stories. It was really wonderful. <laughs> but we don't tell people how long or short. One man only did 20 minutes and we said, you know, it's an hour tape, we have another 40 minutes. And he says, nope, that was everything, I'm done. So we really uh, cater to these people. It's all about what they need. It's all about their family dynamic. It's all about what's important to them, not about us. The family gets involved in the editing process or is more like you help them through that part? The family doesn't really get involved with the editing so much. They um, contribute photographs because uh -huh. we insert photographs, we insert titles where they're needed, we put in music, we do a photo montage with music at the end of almost every video. Um, but the family pretty much leaves it to us uh, because for one thing, we're really wonderful. We don't, I mean, when I say wonderful, we're very protective of the families and what their needs are. So those tapes, we don't cut out anything at all that's crucial to a family. So I it's see. it's everything that they can have. Everything that they can have, even if it's not video at all. Right. Exactly. Well, that's, that's very good to know. Now, um, the people that work with you, I know you have a lot of volunteers because they are needed. So can you tell me about uh, what exactly do they do and how can people participate? Well, you know, when we started, um, we didn't think, well, it took pretty quickly we decided that we wanted young people to work with us. Um, the, po the messages were very positive and very profound, and we felt that the people that would benefit most from this would be young people, high school and college students. And the amazing thing about it is we thought we were going to have to have a whole department of training. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't sometimes work with the students and help them improve their skills and all that 
and certainly the techniques for what we do are a bit specialized. You know, mm -hmm. this is not Star Wars, it's documentary, yes. and it's also very, very sensitive, you know, so we have to teach a little bit of that. But by and large, the students that work with us, they come to us, they're either already in a class for this or they've already learned it themselves and this is something that they're interested in, which is kind of the beauty. These kids get to use this, this interest that they have for something truly meaningful, and they are fully aware of that. Of course. I want to know about, you know, your fundings, because I know all these material costs a lot of money. So how can you keep on going with this? Well, we barely do, <laughs> but we do. And I will say that most of our funding at this point has come from the community, not okay. so much funders, mm -hmm. but community uh, donations. The families that can donate, they do. The ones that cannot are never turned away. No one is turned away because they can't donate. We, you know, when you have a 23-year-old young mother who has a three-year-old child and this mother's dying of cancer, if, and, and she's living with the clothes on her back, and that's all she owns, if we charged her anything, that child would not remember her mother, and that would be a shame, and that's always been our policy. No one is turned away. And I heard that you're expanding this project to other universities. Can you tell me more about that? Well, we were on CBS Evening News uh, in 2005, and one of the calls that we got was from a group of Yale students. They were medical students who wanted to work with us and do this work in uh, Connecticut, which is interesting because that's where the first hospice is, was started, and they, that's where they work. And our second hospice in the United States was in Santa Barbara. But they um, went to the university, and their university approved them to be Life Chronicles Undergraduate Association of Yale University. So we have Yale students working with us. But we've worked with students at Harvard. We worked with students at Purdue, Northwestern, I, a whole list of schools around Everywhere. the country. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's interesting for them to kind of review these tapes, right? You were telling me about the value of them. Oh, absolutely. In fact, if you go on our website to the site on the volunteers, you can read some of their testimonials about the work. And some of them, often students write their college essay on their applications about their work with us. And the colleges love that they work with us because it requires maturity and compassion. And not all community service requires that. And so they appreciate that these are young people coming to their college who have maturity and compassion. Thank you so much for this time. And if you want to participate, you have the website you mentioned, which is? Lifechronicles.org, L-I-F-E-C-H-R-O-N-I-C-L-E-S.org. Do you have a phone number for some people that don't have access to the internet? Right, our office number is 966-3411. Uh, Thank you, Kate. This is very good service, and we really appreciate to have you here. This is the end of the program. We'll see you next time.